I'm Adrian Van Zoften, and this is the Tidbits in Time Almanac for September 2021. September 1st, 1859. English astronomer Richard Christopher Carrington observed a huge group of sunspots. The next day, the skies above the Earth exploded with radio noise, x-rays, and a huge magnetic storm, knocking out telegraph communications all over the globe. If we get another pulse the size of the Carrington event anytime soon, the modern world will come to a halt, a blackout from which it will take us a long time to recover. September 2nd, 1936. Andy Grove was born in Budapest, Hungary. He lived through the Nazi occupation, then the Hungarian fascist dictatorship, before he escaped to the U.S. in 1957. He worked his way up from a busboy to co-founding Intel Corporation, along with Robert N. Noyce and Gordon E. Moore. He was a leader in the microcomputer revolution. September 3rd. 1658. Oliver Cromwell died, ending his protectorate of the Commonwealth and allowing the monarchy to be reestablished. The date of his death was curious in that it coincided with his greatest victories against the Scottish Covenanters at Dunbar on September 3, 1650, and against the English and Scottish Royalists on September 3, 1651. Also, for some hours before and after his death, a huge wind came up, described by Clarendon as the greatest storm of wind that has ever been known, sinking many boats and destroying trees and homes as far away as Flanders. He was born in Huntington, England on April 25, 1599, died in Whitehall, London, England, and was buried first at Westminster Abbey and then later at Sydney Sussex College, Cambridge, England. He was so hated by his enemies that they dug up his body and performed a posthumous execution on January 30th, 1661. September 4th, 1998. Google was incorporated after being founded by Lawrence Larry Page and Sergey Brin. We hear a lot about driverless cars, glasses, Android, AdWords, Chrome, Maps, Street View, Picasa, Gmail, Wallet, YouTube, Nexus, Calendar, Images, Recaptcha, and others too numerous to list. But most, about 80% of the revenue Google earns is from advertising. September 5th, 1958. The novel Dr. Zhivago was published in the United States, written by Boris Pasternak, realistically describing the Russian Revolution and its aftermath. The book infuriated Nikita Khrushchev. The protagonist, Yuri Zhivago, like so many naive Russians, initially welcomed the takeover of Russia from the czars, but when the communists instituted a dictatorship based on murder, gulags, thought control, and the privation of the populace, he became disillusioned. September 6, 1620. The Mayflower set sail from Plymouth, England. It was the third try. They first met up with the Speedwell on August 5, 1620. But that ship sprang a leak, and both ships went back to port for repairs. That happened again, and the Mayflower accompanied the Speedwell back to port where it was determined she was not seaworthy. Thus, the Mayflower departed alone. Those events pushed the voyage later into the year, leading the ship into a further slowdown due to prevailing westerlies during that season. The trip took two months, greatly diminishing their supplies. They arrived in the New World just in time to weather a brutal winter. But the colony eventually survived. 
September 7th, 1927. Philo T. Farnsworth transmitted the first ever all-electric television picture in history. Farnsworth had gotten the idea for television when he was just 14 years old, living on a potato farm in Idaho. His high school science teacher had gotten him interested in electricity, and he studied electrical engineering in his spare time. One day, he was tilling a potato field, walking with the horse back and forth, when he suddenly had a vision of a machine that could break an image down line by line and then reconstruct it on a screen. Farnsworth never became famous for his invention and later felt that he had created a kind of monster. He never owned a television himself, and he refused to let his son watch it. September 8, 1952. Ernest Hemingway published The Old Man and the Sea. As a book of the month club selection, a huge number of copies were sold, making him an international celebrity. His writing style has been compared to an iceberg, wherein he wrote so sparsely that much of the story was underwater, leaving the reader to use imagination to fill in the blanks. There's a larger-than-life-size Evocative Jane de Decker bronze sculpture on the grounds of Wizard Academy depicting Santiago the fisherman dragging the skeleton of the huge marlin onto the beach. September 9th, 2016. The premiere of the Sully movie. Airline pilot Chesley Burnett Sullenberger III, USAFA 1973, experienced a catastrophic bird strike that took out his engines shortly after takeoff from a New York City airport. He carefully set the big jet down on the Hudson River, saving all the passengers and crew. If he had caught a wingtip in the water, the plane would have flipped, probably killing everybody. With Clint Eastwood as the director and Tom Hanks as the star, it was a great movie. September 10th, 1918. The original Ren 1010 was born in Lorraine, France. An American soldier, Leland Duncan, found him as a pup, huddled with his mother, adopted him, and brought him to his home in Los Angeles after the war. Ren 1010 starred in 26 feature films before he died in 1932. His son, Ren 1010 Jr., continued the family tradition in movies and television. The 12th generation is currently still in show business. September 11th, 1959. Congress passed a bill authorizing food stamps for low-income residents. The Constitution does not provide for the federal government to pay for food. While well-intentioned, there are now a huge percentage of Americans on food stamps. Its new name is the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP. September 12, 1958. Jack St. Clair Kilby, a newbie engineer at Texas Instruments, walked into the office of his manager and showed him the first integrated circuit to ever cause a sine wave on an oscilloscope. He later developed the first commercially successful use of the computer chip by his work on the handheld calculator. September 13, 1857. Milton Hershey was born in Derry Township, Pennsylvania, of Mennonite parents. At age 14, he apprenticed at a Carmel Start over. At age 14, he apprenticed at a caramel candy factory. At age 18, he began his own company, but it went bankrupt. He tried again, succeeded that time, and later sold the company for a million dollars. He used the money to move from caramel to chocolate and was wildly successful.
He had a first-class stateroom on the Titanic, but business reasons required him to give it up to take an earlier ship. International Chocolate Day is on his birthday every year, so enjoy. September 14, 1812, the army of Napoleon invaded the city of Moscow. The troops were exhausted and famished by the time they reached the outskirts. The secretary of Napoleon later wrote, A curious and impressive sight was this sudden appearance of the great city, spreading out at the end of a naked plain, topped with 1,200 spires in sky-blue cupolas, strewn with golden stars and linked one to the other with gilded chains. As they approached, they found the city deserted and on fire. The Russians had abandoned and destroyed the city, knowing that the French could not survive the fast-approaching winter. After the long trek back, Napoleon returned with fewer than 20,000 survivors of the 500,000 who originally followed him in the invasion. September 15, 2008. Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy, the largest in U.S. history. That precipitated a financial crisis. Later, Time magazine listed the top 25 people who were responsible. My own list puts Hank Paulson, Tim Geithner, Alan Greenspan, Frank Raines, Kathleen Corbett, and Bren Bernanke at the top. September 16, 1951. Xerox introduced its Model 914, the first commercially successful photocopier. The launch was shown on a live television broadcast from the Sherry Netherland Hotel in New York City. The word Xerox became synonymous with the word copy. September 17, 1776. The Presidio of San Francisco was built by Spain as a fort. It was the oldest active military institution in the U.S. until it was decommissioned on October 1, 1994. The Presidio will be reopened sometime near the year 2161 when it will become the campus for Starfleet Academy, winning out over rival sites such as in North Carolina. The Academy will eventually graduate such future luminaries as James Tiberius Kirk, Jean-Luc Picard, William Riker, Catherine Janeway, Benjamin Sisko, and Spock. The motto of the school is Ex Astra Santilla, which is remarkably similar to that of the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Ex Scientia Tridens. September 18, 1947, the U.S. Air Force was detached from its former status as a branch of the U.S. Army, called the Army Air Corps, and became a separate service. They took the blue from the skies and a pretty girl's eyes and a touch of old glory's hue and gave it to the people who would proudly wear the U.S. Air Force blue. Its primary military mission is to dominate the skies above any battlefield. Such strategy of air superiority was sorely tested during the Cold War, but the U.S. Air Force has now come to a position where ordnance can be delivered anytime, anywhere, with impunity. September 19, 1982. The emoticon was invented by Scott Elliott Fallman while at Carnegie Mellon University. His original suggestion only included two, a smile and a frown. September 20th, 1853, Elisha Graves Otis sold his first elevator to a furniture company in New York City. The Otis Company now has an elevator and escalator customer base of 2.3 million installed units worldwide. If you ever built a multi-story building, the elevator element is extremely difficult and expensive. 
September 21st, 1937. J.R.R. Tolkien published The Hobbit. Tolkien had a big influence on the conversion of C.S. Lewis in that just a week before the event, Tolkien and another friend, Hugo Dyson, spent the evening with Lewis. Conversation got around to spiritual matters, and they talked through the night, ending at almost dawn of the following day. The friendship between Tolkien and Lewis was renowned. They first became acquaintances through a club Tolkien started called the Colbiters Society, a group organized for professors to sit around, discuss Norse sagas, and read them aloud to each other in the original Icelandic language. September 22, 2021. National Hobbit Day. Celebrate people who are two to four feet tall and who eat seven meals per day, and people who are inclined to be a little chubby in the stomach. They dress in bright colors, chiefly green and yellow, wear no shoes because their feet grow naturally leathery soles, and thick, warm brown hair like the stuff on the heads, which is curly. They have long, clever brown fingers, good-natured faces, and laugh deep, fruity laughs, especially after dinner, which they have twice a day when they can get it. September 23, 1980. Seattle Computer Products sold its product, Quick and Dirty Operating Systems, QDOS, coded by Tim Patterson to Microsoft Corporation for $50,000. The name was changed to MS-DOS, and Bill Gates parlayed the royalties into a fortune. September 24, 1664. Four English frigates sailed into New Amsterdam Harbor and seized the port at the lower part of Manhattan. Previously owned by the Dutch, the conquerors renamed the town New York, Naturally, that led to a European war, which was eventually settled three years later, with the Dutch being granted the island of Run, which is near and being granted the island of Run, near Indonesia and famous for nutmeg, and a guarantee of their continued possession of Dutch Guiana, now named Suriname, in South America. September 25th, 1789, the Bill of Rights was passed by the U.S. Congress and sent to the states for ratification. Of the original 17 proposals, only 10 were passed. For the first 150 or so years, hardly any court cases involved these 10 amendments. But thereafter, there has been an explosion of legislation and litigation. Most recently, the Ninth Amendment has become sorely stretched, and the Tenth Amendment has been given mostly short shrift, in my opinion. September 26, 1968. James Patrick Jim Caviezel was born in Mount Vernon, Washington. He starred in various movies, and he later starred in the CBS hit television series Person of Interest. In real life, he exhibits an unusual amount of compassion for people. After all, he did portray Jesus in a prior movie role. September 27, 1066, the Norman Conquest, when William the Conqueror and his army set sail from France to invade England. The invaders were descendants of Viking raiders who intermarried with the French becoming known as Northmen or Normans. The success of the conquest, particularly after the Battle of Hastings a few weeks later, transformed the island kingdom. William dispossessed the English landowners of all their land, causing the exile of most of the elite. To control his new country, he built castles and strongholds throughout, and he gave land to members of his army. He rooted out all the government officials and replaced them with people loyal to him. 
he instituted a new language of Norman French to take the place of Anglo-Saxon. There was a formal elimination of slavery, which greatly affected village life and agriculture. There was a large amount of immigration back and forth between France and England, along with intermarrying. September 28, 1928. Alexander Fleming recounts his story as, When I woke up just after dawn on September 28, 1928, I certainly did not plan to revolutionize all of medicine by discovering the first antibiotic or bacteria killer. But I suppose that was exactly what I did. Before leaving on holiday with his family, he had stacked his petri dishes with staphylococci cultures in his laboratory. When he got back, he saw that one culture had been contaminated by a fungus and that all the staph near that fungus had been destroyed, whereas staph further away had been unaffected. He famously remarked, That's funny. He had accidentally discovered what came to be called penicillin. September 29, 2021. Michael Mass Day named for the archangel. Superstition holds that eating goose on this day heralds prosperity. From an 1812 diary entry by Jane Austen, quote, I dined on goose yesterday, which I hope will secure a good sale of my second edition. September 30th, 1848. Walter Hunt of New York City invented the modern safety pin. While fretting over a $15 debt, he nervously twisted a piece of brass wire. After a little while, an idea struck him to put a safety clutch on a pen. After his patent was approved on April 10, 1849, he sold it for $400 and paid off his $15 debt. The purchaser, W.R. Grayson Company, made millions. This has been the Tidbits in Time Almanac for September 2021, and I will look forward to talking with you again next month.